Hello and welcome to Nick's Knack for Neologisms, episode 15, where we define and discuss the most amazing words in the English language. Last episode, we covered garrulous, levity, complacent, distend, and in this episode, episode 15, we're covering asceticism, occlude, erudite, and opprobrium. And honestly, one of those words I had to pronounce like 10 to 15 times, I'll be honest, before I could actually say it confidently. Seriously, some of them just like, sweet mother. Like, you look at them, and how are you supposed to pronounce these? Anyhow, let's get on to our words. Our first word is ascetic. It's spelled A-S-C-E-T-I-C, ascetic. It is a adjective, or it can be used as a noun, but you can also say asceticism for the noun. But ascetic can also be used as an adjective or a noun. It's A-S-C-E-T-I-C, ascetic, A S. C-E-T-I-C, ascetic. So there's two definitions here. I'm going to read them both, and then we'll kind of focus on one of them that I think is a little more relevant than the other. So the first definition is, a person who dedicates his or her life to a pursuit of contemplative ideals and practices extreme self-denial or self-mortification for religious reasons. Right. So this is the person that is devoutly religious. There's a lot of people that call themselves religious today in America, but they definitely are not ascetics. The ascetic person is the person who probably prays, you know, three to four times a day. And their whole kind of life, I guess you could say, is focused on religion and and living a religious life. Okay. It's a person who dedicates his or her life to to a pursuit of contemplative ideals and practices, extreme self denial or self mortification for religious reasons. So that's like the very strict definition of an ascetic. The second definition, which I think is a little more secular, because when I read it, I kind of think of someone like myself a bit, and it's a person who leads an austerely simple life, especially one who abstains from the normal pleasures of life or denies himself or herself material satisfaction. And I think I'm a bit of of an ascetic if it's if it's that definition, like I'm pretty simple. I don't have a lot of things. I'm kind of a minimalist. I don't have like a ton of material pleasure that I derive from my everyday life. So I think that's kind of a modern day ascetic. So what about you? Are you an ascetic? Is there anything, do you think you could benefit maybe from asceticism? Because I feel like a lot of us, sometimes we just get overwhelmed, even myself included. And I live a fairly simple lifestyle, but sometimes you just get overwhelmed with the amount of junk that I either have to do or I feel like I have to learn or whatever. And I just feel like we're overstimulated, right? So the ascetic person is someone who has very, very minimal stimulation in their life. So monks, if you think of a monk, that is an ascetic. And the way that I think the way that I think we can sort of remember the definition of ascetic is if you look at it, like if you were to see the word, it's A-S-C-E-T-I-C. It almost has the word Celtic. It's Celtic, but it almost says Celtic. If you were to throw in an L in there, it would be Celtic. So I almost think of it saying a Celtic. And I don't mu- know much about the Celtics, not the basketball team, but it was historically it was this group of people who lived somewhere in Europe. But I think, okay, they lived prior to the prior to industrialization. So they probably lived fairly ascetic lifestyles, not necessarily because maybe they wanted to, but simply because they just didn't have a lot of a material abundance like we do today, right? So I think of a Celtic, ascetic, a Celtic, a Celtic. And that's how it kind of remember, reminds me of the definition of an ascetic, a person who leads an austerely simple life, especially one who abstains from the normal pleasures of life or denies himself or herself material satisfaction. And then the third definition is just a monk or a hermit, right? Cool. So that is ascetic. Let's go to some online examples that I found of ascetic being used in a sentence. This is from wordsinasentence.com. Jacob chose to live an ascetic life because of his strict religious beliefs. When Gregory was a monk, he lived an ascetic lifestyle that excluded worldly goods. The minister encouraged his church members to pursue ascetic lives without earthly pleasures. Because Connie loved sugary foods, she found it very hard to stick to her ascetic diet, which did not include sweets and fatty foods. It's got to be hard, right? You guys ever tried to go off like sugar? Woo, that is, a, that is an example of an ascetic lifestyle. I've tried it. Like, I'm pretty close, but 
there's some stuff that I just feel like I need sugar, especially like I can do added sugar, I guess, but every now and then I get a super strong craving for a really good peanut butter and jelly. The ascetic man gave away his fortune and moved into a tiny one bedroom apartment. Usually ascetic shoppers only purchase items that are essential for everyday life. All right, so cool. That's ascetic, asceticism. Hope you guys like that word. I like that word. It's a cool word. All right, next word is occlude. It is a verb, O-C-C-L-U-D-E, occlude, O-C-C-L-U-D-E, occlude. And it means to close, shut, or stop up like a passage or an opening or something like that. It also means to shut in, out, or off. Really, the synonym for a clue, the simple way just to remember it is it's just block. If you're blocking something, you are occluding it. And usually you'll see the word occlude in the medical community. Like if you're a cardiologist, for instance, and you're talking to your patient, you're not going to be like, oh, we found a blockage in your blood vessel. No, you're going to say, oh, we found an occlusion in one of your blood vessels. So occlude, it's just a fancy word for block or to block something, right? So for our mnemonic for a clue, I went on to uh, mnemonicdictionary.com and I found one that was good submitted by this user here. And it said, when you include someone, they are welcome and the gates are always open. But when you occlude them, parentheses rhymes with exclude, they are unwelcome and hence the gates are shut or closed on them, right? So exclude is the opposite of include and, op and occlude is almost like excluding someone, but rather than excluding them, you're just blocking them. You're shutting them off from coming in. So it's a slight minor difference between occlude and exclude, right? Here's another mnemonic that I found on the same website submitted by a different user. It says, sounds like conclude, which means close or shut something. So conclude, occlude, exclude, they're all very similar. And if you could remember that they're similar, on a test, you could probably get the right answer, right? And then here's a third one. This one doesn't really make sense to me because I don't really follow, follow Harry Potter. But for those of you out there that are big Harry Potter fans, here's one for you. It says, Harry Potter fans may remember occlumency, which is the subject that helps to close one's mind. Occlumency. Cool. That sounds kind of cool. Sweet. All right, so let's go on to uh, some some online or online examples of occlude being used in a sentence, all right? This is from wordsandsense.com. It is quite dangerous when blood clots occlude the flow of oxygen in the human body. Yeah, so usually you're going to see occlude. Any of you out there that are like pre-med or anything like that, this word will definitely come up. Since I do not like people looking inside of my home, I use blinds to occlude my windows. Fortunately, the city construction project will not occlude the main highway and cause traffic delays. Occlude the main highway. I like that. It's just so funny because why would you ever use this word if you can just use the word block? Although it's kind of a cool word if you say it, occlude. It sounds kind of cool. So that's why I'd use it. The purpose of the curtain on the airplane is to occlude the first class area from the economy area. And then the last example goes, it looks like the clouds are going to occlude the sun and ruin my picnic. Sweet. So that's a word occlude. The synonym is just to block. All right. So ascetic, occlude. And then here's our third word. Our third word I really like this word. It's erudite. Erudite. Sounds like a meteorite. It has nothing to do actually with astronomy or meteorology or anything like that. But erudite, it is an adjective and it's spelled E-R-U-D-I-T-E. -E. And I want you to pay real particular attention to this spelling because it'll help you remember the word here in a second. So it's E-R-U-D-I-T-E, -E, erudite. And the definition is it's characterized by great knowledge, learned, or scholarly. So when I think of the word erudite, erudite, I just think of scholarly. Someone who's super scholastic, super learned, super knowledgeable about something is erudite on that subject. So I did a little, when I was doing the research for this podcast, I found out that erudite, the word root is rudis, R-U-D-I-E. It actually means ignorant. It used to mean ignorant, raw, unskilled. So someone who was, say, rudis in nature was someone that just didn't know enough. And so if you look at the word erudite, it has that R-U-D word root in it. And it almost sounds like rude or crude, like a crude person or someone who says crude things. 
they don't really seem to have a m n much knowledge when it comes to socializing or someone else's feelings or anything like that, right? So if you take an erudite, that E part of erudite, E for the prefix there stands for out or uh, like exit, right? If you're exiting, that E-X-I-T, X means out. So you're almost taking someone out of their rude or crude state, erudite, you're taking them out of it. And by doing so, you are making them knowledgeable, right? You're giving them information so that they're erudite, they're scholarly. I don't know if that helps you remember it. I just thought it was kind of interesting. So the prefix E means out, and then the rudis means unskilled, raw, or ignorant. So erudite is taking them out of that unskilled, raw, or ignorant phase or stage and bringing them into like enlightenment almost, erudite. So usually you see like erudite with professors. And not all professors are erudite, right? You have some professors that aren't that erudite, but then you have those professors where you're like, holy cow, I feel like this professor goes home and they must read three to four hours a day on subjects that are related to what they like. And then they come into class, you're just like, holy cow, how can they have so much information? Those professors, those are the ones that are erudite. All right, so let's go to erudite. And we'll, uh, I'll give you some examples here of what I found online of erudite being used in a sentence from wordsinasentence.com. As a result of having studied abroad several years, Helen has become quite erudite on the subject of art history. While I learned everything I know from television, my sister can credit being erudite to spending countless hours in the classroom obtaining her doctoral degree. Erudite. Yeah, so someone with like multiple PhDs, they're definitely going to be erudite, I would hope, right? Our erudite instructor was able to answer every question asked by our class. With his informative presentation, William showed his peers how erudite he truly was. And the last example goes, many difficult questions were being asked by the students and they were all followed by erudite responses from their knowledgeable teachers. Sweet. That is the word erudite. And the synonym, remember, is scholarly. Erudite, scholarly. Cool. Let's go on to our last word. This is the word that, like, killed me when I was trying to pronounce it. Oh, my God. Opprobrium. But now I feel like I'm nailing it. <laughs> Opprobrium. It's such a weird word. If you saw it, you probably mispronounced it. It's just a bizarre-looking word. It's spelled O-P-P-R-O-B-R-I-U-M. So it's opprobrium, opprobrium, O-P-P-R-O-B-R-I-U-M, opprobrium. It's a noun, and it's the disgrace or the reproach incurred by conduct considered outrageously shameful. Semicolon infamy. So let me read that again because it's kind of a confusing definition, but, but listen to the definition. It's interesting. The disgrace or the reproach incurred by conduct considered outrageously shameful so it's not, it's not actually the conduct itself that causes opprobrium. It's the feeling afterwards from conduct that might be considered shameful. So really, opprobrium is just a feeling. It's a feeling of shame. If you were to look at opprobrium, be okay. What's a what's a simple, sweet synonym for opprobrium? I would just say shame, right? So it's a feeling that you feel from having been caught doing something maybe wrong or shameful. Opprobrium. So when I think of a program, I think of that politician who's done something behind closed doors and it was leaked for whatever reason and bam, he's busted and now he feels opprobrium. It's just kind of funny. When you think about like when I do these things, when I study words, and you get like all philosophical about it. I think about opprobrium, right? It's like that politician would not have felt opprobrium had he not been caught. So we could almost say that opprobrium presupposes one being caught and it also presupposes someone who's going to catch you. Right? If that politician did something and he absolutely knew 100% that he was never, ever going to get caught, he would never, ever feel opprobrium because opprobrium presupposes, it supposes in advance, someone catching you in the act of doing something wrong. And it also presupposes that that person who did that wrongful act is actually going to feel shame and guilt after having been caught, right? Because there's some people who they'll get caught and they still just don't give a flying f right? They just don't care and they're not going to feel opprobrium. So opprobrium also presupposes a conscience, I would say. Yes, definitely. If you don't have a conscience, you might not feel shameful. Opprobrium. Okay, so how do we remember opprobrium and its definition? So I found this on Mnemonic Dictionary. This is cool. Submitted by, I don't know who submitted this, just some random user. But they said, if you take opium, which is an illegal drug, right? If you take opium, you'll be criticized, humiliated, and put to shame. 
So if you guys have ever played that fun game where you take a long word, like a program, which is super freaking long, and you find find out, hey, what other words are in there? Opium, you can actually you can spell opium from a program. Opium is contained in that word. So if you take opium, you'll be criticized, humiliated, and put to shame. So opium use causes opium. Oprium, wow, perhaps. Of course, if you're one of those drug deal or drug users who just doesn't give a flying hoot and you're doing opium and you get caught, you're not gonna feel opium. Opprobrium. Holy cow. Now <laughs> I'm mixing up words. Sweet mother, opprobrium. All right. Cool. So let's go on to let's go on to a program being used in a sentence. This is found on wordsinasentence.com. So although the golfer faced a great deal of opprobrium after being caught with his mistress, he quickly regained the love of his fans. That probably re refers to Tiger Woods, right? Didn't he get caught for something like that? All right. Because the athlete used steroids to increase his performance, he had to face the opprobrium of the sports committee. So that actually, so this, 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 now that I'm reading this, that actually doesn't make sense. So let, let me read that again. See if you guys can can see the misusage of the word opprobrium here. So because the athlete used steroids to increase his performance, he had to face the opprobrium of the sports committee. I see what they're trying to say, but I think it's a little ambiguous because if you read this literally, it's saying that the sports committee had opprobrium, but really what they're trying to say is that the athlete himself experienced opprobrium because maybe he was caught by the sports committee such a word nerd but there's some ambiguity there in that sentence which is kind of interesting i'm a big i'm a big follower of uh, mma and one of my favorite fighters john jones not too long ago got busted for steroid use and then i think i saw him like just crying on a film because he got busted but the fact of the matter is like opprobrium you don't really feel opprobrium until you're caught like i guarantee when he was taking his roids he was happy doing it because he knew that it was going to increase his performance let him maybe keep his number one spot and all that. But as soon as he got busted, bam, that opprobrium set in. Poor guy. It's a whole other topic on itself. I feel like I could talk about steroid use for like an hour, but I won't. Just saying. The next example goes like this for opprobrium in a sense. It says the government is willing to ignore public opprobrium and build the highway through the city park. Mm, I don't know about that usage either. What do you guys think of that one? Let's, let, let me read it again. The government is willing to ignore public opprobrium and build the highway through the city park. So I feel like this example commits the same word usage error that the second one did. It says the government is willing to ignore public opprobrium, which is the same as kind of feeling like the way the public would feel shameful. I think, again, this one is trying to say that the government is willing to ignore opprobrium that they might experience from the public and build the highway through the city park. But anyhow, let's go to the last example this one I think will be a little better. After the singer was arrested, he went into seclusion and hoped the opprobrium would soon be forgotten. So, yeah, interesting. Those are interesting. So I just cut and paste these from the from that website. But I feel like whoever authored these maybe just didn't really understand opprobrium all the way. So if we go back to the first example, this one is perfect. Although the golfer faced a great deal of opprobrium after being caught with his mistress, he quickly regained the love of his fans. I think the way this website works is it just finds a program, like it has some sort of spider search, and then it links up those sentences into the website. But anyhow, that's a program being used in a sentence. So remember, when we think of program, we just think of shame. That's the easiest way to nail it on a test. Cool. So those were our four words, ascetic, occlude, erudite, and opprobrium. Let's play a little game here and see if we can remember the definitions. By the way, when I was doing the research for this podcast, I found a very cool website. Again, I'm not getting paid for any of this, so this is just me giving an unbiased account of the website. It's called vocabulary.com. If you guys go there, it's super cool. You can definitely set up like your own your own quiz and stuff, and they have really, I don't know, just helpful definitions. They've got pronunciations on there. I thought it was really nice, so I might myself start using it when I feel like being a little nerdy. All right, so let's do this. So all these, all these um, multiple choice questions that I'm about to give you were, were found on vocabulary.com. I just kind of cut and pasted them here. So first one is for ascetic. The opposite of ascetic is, so I'm going to give you four choices here. The opposite of ascetic is we're looking for the antonym for ascetic. Here are your four choices. Unrestrained, unconfirmed, unavoidable, uncommon. So what is the opposite of ascetic? Unrestrained unconfirmed, unavoidable, or uncommon. If you guessed unrestrained, boom, that's perfect. Remember, the ascetic is that simple person who restrains from 
pleasures in everyday life, material pleasures, right? It's the monk. So monks, the opposite of a monk would definitely be an unrestrained person. Let's go to the second multiple choice. All right, so we're talking about occlude here. Occlude means to stifle, rhapsodize, gerrymander, or impede. So occlude means to stifle, rhapsodize, gerrymander, or impede. All right, if you guess impede, you are right. Remember, occlude is just a fancy word for block. So if we're blocking something, we're impeding it. So that would be, so the answer was MP for that one. All right, the next one is opprobrium. Opprobrium means visibility, capability, motion, or shame. Hopefully, this one's easy. Hopefully, you guys got this one. Opprobrium means visibility, capability, motion, or shame. Boom, it's shame. Nice. All right. That's the easy synonym for opprobrium, shame. All right. Here's another one for ascetic or asceticism. Where would you most likely find ascetic practices in a casino a factory a resort or a monastery you guys instantly got that one right it was a monastery and even if you didn't know oh i looked at this one even if you didn't know what ascetic meant you could probably use some test taking strategies here and be like well okay a casino and a resort those are similar it's where people go on vacation a factory a factory a casino and a resort they all have a lot of activity and then you got this monastery it's like the one that's completely the odd man out, right? So you could probably guess monastery and you would have got it correct anyway. All right. Erudite means, so we're looking for the synonym for erudite, perceptive, scholarly, shoddy, venial. Erudite means perspective, scholarly, shoddy, or venial. Probably got that one right too. Scholarly is the answer, right? That erudite professor is very scholarly. All right, let's go to the next one. Occlude. Occlude means to plagiarize, regurgitate, prioritize, or block. Bam. Block is the answer, right? And P, block, is the synonym for occlude. All right, let's do another for erudite. Erudite means distasteful and unpleasant, having or showing profound knowledge, fundamentally different or distinct in quality or kind, of or relating to a physical injury or wound to the body. And the answer was the second one, right? Having or showing profound knowledge, erudite. And lastly, we'll do one more for opprobrium. We're looking for a synonym here. Opprobrium means the state of having been made use of, a morbid fear of water, a state of disgrace resulting from public abuse, unhealthy vapors rising from the ground or other sources. So if you guess the third one, you were right. Opprobrium means a state of disgrace resulting from public abuse. Cool. So that sums it up for episode 15 of Nick's Knack for Neologisms, Asceticism, Occlude, Erudite, and Opprobrium. If you guys enjoy my episodes, please help others find me by leaving me a rating and a review on iTunes. And cool. Until episode 16, we will see you then. Bye-bye.